Well, hello there, you. How you doing? And welcome to another live stream, getting going in two minutes. Of course, you may well be watching on the replay, in which case you can just fast forward and get straight into the main event. Whichever way you're watching, it is good to have you here. I'm Mike Russell from Music Radio Creative, audio production today in Logic Pro, and also over in Adobe Audition CC. We'll be doing some fairy tale sound effects. Magic will happen during this live stream. So very excited about it. Good to see you there as well. You can see now on the live stream people tuning in and also over in the chat. David Silk, big hello to you, sir. Uh, first one in and uh, helped me out of a pickle with my sends yesterday in audition. Rovigo55, David Hunter, shout out to Scott Davis, Mark Reed, Digital Zone 3D. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're watching. We're getting going in one minute from now. Stand by. Testing the left speaker. Left. left. Testing the right speaker. Right. right. Testing phaser. 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 All frequency sweep. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by for music radio creative live with Mike Russell. MRC Live. Music radio creative live with Mike Russell. Starting in 30 seconds. Hello you, it's Mike Russell here from musicradiocreative.com. Really fantastic, fab and fine to be with you on this, uh, what I guess you could call is a wonderful Wednesday. Would it be appropriate to call this a wonderful Wednesday? It is uh, a Wednesday with lots of lots of hearts going on in the background because we're doing a fairy tale uh, production and sound effects during this show. So it should be great. Uh, but starting off on rather a serious note, I would like to let you know that everyone here at Music Radio Creative and myself, my heart goes out to you right now. If you're watching and you're from Mexico or Puerto Rico right now, Mexico, a devastating earthquake uh, the other day. And of course, the uh, the storms, uh, enough storms already hitting the United States, of course. Uh, but Puerto Rico uh, now facing a Category 5 storm, from what I understand. So really hope that our friends out in that part of the world are doing OK, staying safe. And I was delighted uh, to hear from my friend Juan from Mexico. He works not too far from Mexico City, as it happens. And uh, I just uh, have seen just before I went live, it flashed up there with a message from Juan. So um, to everyone there, in particular, my friend Juan, it's great to hear that you're safe. Uh, please do stay safe at this time. And yeah, just wanted to get that out there and send my heart, my, my love, my thoughts and my emotions to you right now. If you're watching and you're, you're suffering in any way uh, as a consequence of anything that has happened recently in those areas of the world. So here we are then. Uh, let's get into Adobe Audition and Logic Pro as well. It's going to be a very exciting show where I will mention your comments every 15 minutes. And uh, well, let's, uh, I brought a bit of fairy magic with me today. Can you see that? There you go. A little bit, a little bit of fairy magic happening on the show today. Uh, we'll have all kinds of things and, and dings and uh, magical sound effects and bits like that. Uh, anything like waving a magic, oh, magic Tinkerbell or something like that uh, would be very nice indeed. So <laughs> let's get over to my uh, my screen share now. All you can see, I've been uh, been scheduling some more YouTube videos over there. Um, first, let me tell you, if you I haven't mentioned it for a while, um, but if you haven't joined the Music Radio Creative Community, I highly recommend that you uh, you head over and check it out at community.musicradiocreative.com. That is community.musicradiocreative.com. Um, yesterday we had a great contribution from. Paul Paul Orr. I'm going to play it again, actually. This is really, really cool. Uh, Paul made a jingle for the phone-in number. If you don't know, there is a number you can call uh, when I am live streaming, and you get straight through to the studio with me and on the air, and um, Paul just thought he'd make a jingle. So have a listen. Lucky caller number one gets to speak to Mike Russell live, 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 around the globe. 
Call now and broadcast like you've never broadcast before. 415-800-1055. That's country code 1-415-800-1055. So as Paul has mentioned, it's 415-800-1055 if you'd like to call the show. And uh, loads of stuff going on in the community at the moment, uh, including talks about uh, what kind of insurance do you carry for your business if you're in the audio industry. Uh, Some interesting discussion happening there. Uh, We've got... Don't worry if you can hear the, uh, <laughs> the sirens. Uh, it's got. It's unusual to have sirens on this part of the Isle of Wight. There are quite a few sirens whizzing past at the moment. You might have heard that picked up by my microphone. And Scott Davis, wow, amazing, amazing stuff. Thank you, Scott, so much. Really appreciate you. Uh, wonderful donation to the show. Uh, 20 US dollars via Super Chat uh, to the MRC Live show. Uh, Scott, you really helped to uh, to keep things going here. So I'm very, very grateful to you, Scott. Uh, very, very much appreciated. No message with the chat, just a, uh, a donation, which is very, very much appreciated. Uh, um, grateful, super grateful for that, Scott. Uh, and of course, there you go. <laughs> there is the uh, the the kaching that you you get on the show, of course. Uh, super chat, of course, is something inside YouTube at youtubecom slash creative. If it's not available in your region, of course, there is mrc.fm slash donate. Another way to support the show. Um, so yeah, loads of stuff as I was mentioning in the community. Uh, David has been uh, David Hunter has been remixing the jingles. Oh, you mean this jingle? Yes, this is another way to announce the live call-in number. It is a US number, by the way, so do check the bill or the bill payer. <laughs> and what's that number? Four one five eight hundred. So remember, it's like a call to America. If you're in America, that could be free for you. Music Radio of course, if you're calling from the UK, Australia, from Chile, Spain, wherever, then do check how much it's going to cost you before calling. And that number will get you straight through to the studio uh, with me, which is exciting. Um, where to find artist drops? Lots of people introducing themselves. We've had 87 posts in that thread now. And uh, lots of people asking about these new Adobe Audition features that are coming before the end of the year. Uh, and I see the latest post is by Life of Chris here in the community. Uh, is there a date for later? this year not as far as we know uh all we do know is there is a huge adobe conference coming up uh towards the end of october uh and if uh tradition is anything to go by adobe do generally drop updates around uh big conferences so i have no uh knowledge or inside information that that will be the case this year uh, but we can hope can't we we can hope that in around a month's time uh, we might see those uh, those nice updates dropping in uh, as i've mentioned before auto ducking uh, multi-track clip enhancements uh, saving time with faster mix downs and bounces really is very exciting now let's play an oboe oh yes there's a, a low note of an oboe whoa grab my usb there we go, USB keyboard here. Uh, this is the iKai Professional LPK25. And uh, let's try and find something a little fairy like. Strings? Cinema strings. Very cool. And of course, a harp. A harp actually might be uh, a good idea. Oh, that's cool. Oh, excellent. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to play in a few uh, fairy effects of my own. I have got some voiceovers I'm going to be working with as well in just a mo. Uh, so let's just set up the audio channel mapping over here, and we will record. Uh, that's my inputs. Yep, inputs. So we want we want to record inputs nine, nine and ten, I believe nine and ten. So let's do that, and we'll start a new audio file. And I'm just going to jam in a few bits here to audition. I've also got some sound effects and music I'm going to use too. Something like that. I keep bashing my microphone when I play the keyboard. Let's move it over here. Nice. And up an octave. And one more. Oh, that's very nice. And then again. Wow. And then down again. Let's go really low. And really low. 
that's very low on the uh, the harpsichord scale there, isn't it? Anyway, we might use some of that later on. Uh, Logic is is great if you need to do MIDI or you need to play any kind of musical instrument. You can record it straight into Audition uh, if you've got a decent audio interface or, uh, as I'm using here, the Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK, uh, which is a dream for routing audio from one, uh, one door to another or from one software program to another inside your Mac or your PC. If you are a Mac user, by the way, uh, one company that I like and really recommend is Rogue Amoeba. I don't know if you've ever heard of Rogue Amoeba. They make software like Loopback and also, what's the other one they make? Might be best to uh, to look up their website. It's just a, a great resource if you are recording lots of stuff uh, inside a Mac. This is Mac only. Yeah, they make all this stuff. So uh, they've got, yeah, stuff I like, Loopback and Audio Hijack. So Audio Hijack can do all kinds of clever stuff with audio. It's like a mixing desk inside your Mac. Uh, and Loopback, you can create virtual audio interfaces and stuff. And they've got other stuff. I, I know a lot of people who watch this show uh, use Nicecast to do their own internet radio stations. And Airfoil is kind of like bringing together together the best of uh, airplay and, and chromecast and all of that so good all-round stuff and uh, i'm not actually using that because i don't need it because i have a, a mixing desk that can do that all for me but if you don't have a mixing desk or a decent audio interface this may be a solution for you if you are a mac user let's hop back over here i'm kind of feeling like having a, a xylophone what have we got here uh xylophones oh a bit low there let's go up a few octaves yeah, I'm not quite feeling that. Uh, homemade xylophone. Uh, island mallets. Oh, lots of different percussion here. Xylophone keys. Let's try this. It's kind of got some weird stuff on it. Ethereal mallets. Breathing vibes. Let's try some of that. And oh, what else have we got? Let's check out some more of those xylophones. Uh, xylophone. Uh, xylophone delay. Just a standard xylophone. That's really done, isn't it? Okay, I think I've got enough stuff for the moment from Logic Pro, so back over to Audition. Uh, let's normalize that all out and get that ready to use in some of these productions. Uh, so yeah, we've got plenty of, of variety here. Uh, let's cut out that big gap where I was talking in between, and we'll just call that Fairy Stuff. Fairy Stuff. So as you can see, xylophones, harpsichords, uh, anything kind of ethereal or spacey or magical, uh, really good instruments to use when doing this uh, this kind of fairy tale production. Uh, so we've got that. We've got Isabella's Fairy Liners here, uh, <laughs> which we recorded earlier. I'm just going to do some normalization over here. Um, going back to a question that David asked yesterday in the, in the live chat, and I will get to your messages in about a, a minute from now, if you're posting right now anywhere and watching live. Um, David was saying... Saying, um, I recommend a process of ENCN uh, when looking after voiceovers. So that's equalize, normalize, compress, normalize. And um, that's something I've traditionally done in the waveform view. So I am normalizing here now. But I'll show you another trick when I get into the multi-track. Um, at the moment, I'm just going through at the moment, just randomly normalizing all these voices because I can see Isabella has, has spoken at different volumes when she's been doing uh, different, uh, different voice acting, shall we say. Uh, so there we go. And I know at the end it's a little whisper. So let's grab that and normalize it. Um, so what you can do is once I've done that, and normalizing can only be done in the waveform view. As far as I know, you cannot do it in the multi-track. Uh, fairy production. Let's go over here and into my downloads folder with the MRC template. Why not? Let's bring in these liners. So if I know these are all separate liners, which I do, I'm just going to do some cuts here. Or I think I can click C. Is it C? Oh, no, that's the, that's the marker, isn't it? Where are we going for the razor blade? It's R, isn't it? R. I'm thinking about a Premiere Pro. I'm in a Premiere Pro mode at the moment. Hit the R short key, 
and uh, we can just raise her up. It's a quicker way of, of just splitting stuff up. And then back to T for the time controller. Uh, there's also V for the move tool as well. I must get used to using those shortcuts more. I know David Silk is in the chat right now, and uh, he'd be proud. He'd be proud to see me using more shortcuts uh, to move things around and get things happening in the multi-track. Uh, so David is a regular viewer to the show, by the way, if you're, if you're brand new to this show. Uh, David Silk uh, is always forever giving away great uh, shortcuts shortcut information. Now that I've made all those cuts, what I can do is I can highlight the whole audio. And let me just give you an example of what's happening here. Let's just play one one voice liner at random from Isabella. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. <laughs> Very sound advice. I love it. Uh, that's a lot louder than, say, for instance, uh, this one here. Make a wish. Okay, it's a lot louder, or it sounds slightly louder. What we can do now is select all of the voices Isabella has created there, right-click and match the clip loudness. Uh, if you're a regular viewer, you'll probably see me doing this quite often. And what it does is it runs through and makes everything the same apparent loudness. So now, if you see, um, I wonder if I can just zoom in and show this for you. So I'm just going to do a screen zoom. Uh, which I just need to make it a little clearer and move this down. Let's move that down over there so you can see. All right, can you see that? Yeah, so over here I've got the first liner is at minus 1.48 dB. Then we've got minus 2.34 dB. This one's super loud, so minus 5.51 dB. So it's it's kind of like normalization, but it's better because it's essentially matching the audio to be at the loudness standard you specify. If you notice, let's bring it up again. Match clip loudness. See here when you right click in the multi track uh, and then have a look at that. So I'm going for minus 16 luffs. I always work at minus 16 luffs just simply because I'm used to using it for podcasting and stuff like that. But you might have a different standard you go for. If you don't know what standard you're supposed to be putting in there, then I recommend, well, just go for minus 16 because that's a kind of web and podcasting uh, standard for loudness. So now we've got everything exactly the same loudness. It's done nothing to compress the audio. It's simply an amplitude adjustment. You can listen to this. Make a wish. And this. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. And you'll find actually that everything sounds the same loudness. And I think that needs a little bit of de-clicking. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Isabella's got a bit of a clicky voice there, hasn't she? I'll get into de-clicking that in just a moment. Uh, but first of all, let's get into... The wonderful comments that are coming in on the live stream chat right now. Whether you're watching on youtube.com slash music radio creative, facebook.com slash music radio creative, or anywhere else like Twitch, Periscope, anywhere. It's just great to have you here. And I always love to mention your comments on the live show. So let's do that right now. Audio production and more. This is Mike Russell on musicradiocreative.com. Those jingles always get me grooving. Uh, so what have we got here? Uh, Sida is saying, hola, that's hola. Uh, they're on Facebook Live. If you are watching on Facebook Live, do let me know where you're tuning in from. It's always good to know where you're watching from. It really, really helps to... Um, to know that. For instance, I can see on my personal page, hey, William Lee Decker is back. Hey, boyo, he says uh, in the chat. It's good to see you. Uh, it's, it's fantastic to see you. Uh, what else have we got? Yeah, Paul Orr is watching as well. Nice to see you there, Paul. Uh, and I, I hope you tuned it. You were able to tune in at the start and, and caught me playing your awesome jingle again that uh, that is in the community over at community.musicradiocreative.com. Uh, we've got Joseph there saying, what's up? Which is really, really cool. Uh, yeah, Paul is saying hi from Opie and Paul in Tennessee, uh, which is a great area of the United States. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, let's see. E Primify is there. Woke up just in time for the show, which is good. Uh, Christopher, my bad. Missed a few days, but I'm back. Oh, it's great to have you back, Christopher. Really good to have you back. Patrick, uh, looking forward to the session. Uh, David says, gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> Which is nice. Uh, things are so much easier if you have a MIDI keyboard. Yes, I could not agree more. Uh, the IK LPK25, I think it was about um, 35 British pounds, maybe maybe around 40 US dollars. Well worth it. Uh, obviously, you can get more advanced uh, keyboards as well. Um, but I kind of like that. It does the job for me. I'm not particularly, uh, you know, uh, uh, a classically trained musician. Uh, so having something bigger wouldn't really serve me. But for jamming and sketching out jingle ideas and stuff like that, it's just perfect. Yeah, MIDI keyboards are brilliant. 
and David Silk agreeing there in the chat. Uh, also looking after the, uh, the the comments along with Isabella on, on moderation right now. Really appreciate you guys with the uh, the spanners doing that inside YouTube. Uh, Epremify, I use Rogue Amoeba, although they've been catering to Soundflower less. Yeah, Soundflower kind of disappeared, didn't it? Because um, that was the open source uh, audio routing program for Mac. And I think it kind of died out. Uh, but then I think Rogue, Rogue Amoeba kind of forked the, the code of Soundflower and and now they've probably integrated a lot of that and updated it into their products, which obviously are paid products, but if they're doing good stuff, then hey, that's good. Uh, great voice, Isabella, says Moba King, which is nice. Isabella, you sound amazing, says David Hunter. Wow, there you go. What else have we got? Uh, what would the Luffs be for radio, Scott Davis is asking. Uh, well, Scott, that's a very, very good question. Uh, let me just uh, hop over to my screen share so we can have a look here. Um, where are we? Effects menu. There is actually a loudness radar meter here. And those who don't believe in magic will never find it. You see, as you're playing the audio, it goes around and it radars. So as you can see, there are lots of different standards there. Um, I think by default, it's on the EBU R128LU, um, which is minus 23 luffs. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, to be honest with you, like I've worked in radio production for <laughs> decades and I've never really heard the word loudness banded about much in radio. I don't know if I've just hung out with the <laughs> with the, the audio producers who didn't care about loudness standards. Mm. But that is my honest honest answer for you at the moment is that nobody has ever really bothered with loudness, um, certainly in the in the places I've worked at in radio. It's more about uh, sort of compression and, and getting things to sound good on air because I guess when things do go on air, they go through a final compressor anyway that kind of flattens the sound to one level. And also with radio, it's I think it's very different as well, isn't it? Because everything has to sound super loud on the radio and every audio producer is competing to make the loudest jingle possible. Anything, If you could go above zero dB, I'm sure audio producers in radio imaging would go above zero dB. Um, but yeah, I, I, I seem to remember minus 23 as a number that I've heard somewhere um, but I can't give you a firm answer on that Scott maybe someone else in the chat can uh, let's do a quick Google because uh, I'd like to help if I can loudness standard for radio because I'm curious now that you've asked that question right the loudness unit uh, was originally proposed in the EBU R128 so that's what I had there the preset of EBU R128 LU um, the EBU R128 or 128 recommendation was primarily concerned with television but radio programs or podcasts are often consumed uh, uh, on mobile devices and therefore in noisier environments okay so I think when we look at the EBU 128 LU preset here. This is the kind of standard. I guess you could call it a broadcast standard. And as Google has rightly pointed out, with a, it's a link actually to the Orphonic blog. Orphonic actually make a great product that I know a lot of podcasters use to process their audio. And what they've written in that post is that, yeah, primarily it was TV that was concerned with loudness, um, but radio programs and, and podcasts often get concerned about that stuff too. But for some reason, podcasters all seem to have agreed on minus 16. Really interesting discussion. I could carry on down that rabbit hole for ages. Um, but Scott, I hope that's helpful to you. And that's just what I've discovered uh, looking around and, and from what I have on, on my mind there. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. Isabella is exclu excusing her clicking uh, because I asked her to record straight after lunch. I did. Yes. I did. So my bad. Um, and I will I will tidy that up myself. Uh, hi from Norway, says Hassan. Uh, Roma is in from Paris. Robert says hi out of Germany. Mark's in Nottingham, UK. Uh, Robert says, Mike, I'm a college instructor in North Carolina, really enjoying teaching some of your lessons to my students. That's awesome, Robert. I know we have uh, quite a few teachers uh, watching this show, so which I'm honoured to have, by the way. Amazing stuff. A uh, big, big shout out to one of my favourite regulars, uh, Patrick Keller, uh, who also, I believe, is somewhere in the US. I don't know if he's watching today, but he does tune in regularly as well. Uh, and he instructs a lot of um, media students, I believe, uh, in college, in a college in the United States also. 
uh, Woody27271. Love Mike's videos. You're a hero. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. What are you, what are the settings on your voice when you're live? Um, uh, yeah. Crikey. Uh, goes through a TLM 103, that's Neumann, by the way, into a DBX 286S, then into a Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK. Uh, the DBX is primarily concerned with compression. The mixing desk is primarily concerned with EQ, and then it just goes out. So I hope that helps. And Scott said, somebody try telling uh, that to commercial creators for TV that loudness doesn't matter. Hmm. Indeed. <laughs> so there you go the loudness radar actually it was something i think uh, adobe introduced about a year or so ago and it's um it's been very handy for broadcasters and podcasters alike but let's get back into this uh now with isabella's voice and i'm going to those who um i have demonstrated this before i'm sure on the channel um but you can kind of find clicks quite easily uh with this here this is the spot healing brush tool let's just try that and see if it see if it helps those who don't who do Let's do there's a couple of clicks there that I can probably try and wipe out. And we'll just go through steadily and wipe the, the general clicky areas and see whether we can sort of tidy this up a little bit. All right. And one up there as well. Okay. Those who don't believe those who what I might do actually, this might require a bit of advanced surgery. So let's go in and uh do that. Yeah, it's going to ruin my multi-track session. I'm okay with that. Um, let's cut those clicks out there. Those who don't, th those who don't believe in magic, will never find it. Okay, that's good. Uh, now we can go into the multi-track. Let's go over there and clear these warning triangles down. Dismiss all warnings, and um, let's just move this onto the EQ track and have a play with it. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. And let's do some kind of cool uh, reverb and stereo stuff here. So uh, let's go for studio reverb first and foremost. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. And uh, all, uh, that actually uh, probably needs to go somewhere else in the chain or I need to do something with voice effects. Let's see. Maybe a studio reverb on the overall process. Get rid of that. Let's try this. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. And we'll turn it up. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Okay, that's sounding okay. And now I'm going to just have a little play here with um, a clip effect. Now, often you've seen me adding time and pitch, pitch shifter to the whole multi-track, but did you know if you click clip effects over here, you can add a pitch shifter only to one waveform uh, inside your multi-track session. And the reason I find this is quite good is I'm probably going to want to move this around later. And if I set an automation onto the track down here, uh, say this is a volume automation, say I do that, yeah, it's going to fade down and fade up there. But then if I move that along, that automation is suddenly lost and useless. So adding an automation to uh, an audio clip inside the multi-track is handy because it will stick with your audio clip no matter where you move it. Um, so now I've got the pitch shifter on there. Let's have a look and see. I can do it like that, but also um, let's have a look. Um, what am I looking for here? Can I? There was a way. Oh, I know where it is. Yep. It's the triangle. Where's the triangle? It should be. There must be a triangle here. There it is up there. Yeah. Triangle next to volume, pitch shifter, transpose ratio. Now you can see I've got the. Um, let's set this to default as well. So I've got my pitch here and I can move that around on the audio track. So at the moment, those who don't, that's a normal pitch, and then I can just pitch it up a bit. Those who don't believe in... And I can bring it up a bit more. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. And then I can maybe pitch it right up at the end. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Bring it right those up. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. <laughs> a bit too much there, maybe. Find it. Okay, let's bring that down a little bit more, and then we'll throw in some sound effects as well. So what have we got here? Um, I've got some sound effects that I got hold of earlier to use in these productions. 
Let's, uh, I think that's a bit of music, so let's pop that at the end. We'll never find it. Chick, we'll never find it. Uh, I'm going to just pull that down a bit, sounding rather unnatural. Chick, we'll never find it. And uh, I'm also going to bring in uh, some of the fairy stuff I recorded earlier. So let's just see what we've got here. Those who don't. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Maybe a little bit more of a gap here. Oh, keep the automation in, trying not to delete the automation there. And as you can see, if I move this along, the automation sticks with the waveform. Uh, so. Magic will never find Magic will, ne will never find it. Will never find it. There we go, and uh, we'll use some of the other stuff later, but that's just a, a good start, and I'm kind of thinking that I might like to uh, bounce these down. Uh, so let's uh, bounce down, select Eclipse only right now. Here we go, and I'm just going to place a marker there, um, because, 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 uh, no, actually, the marker can go, the markers can go. Let's just reverse that. And we get nice, and we want the marker to go there, and then generate no edit insert silence, ten second silence. Yep, that's okay. And we're going to add on some. Actually, hang on, I've got my markers all messed up here. What's going on with those markers? Let's uh, reverse it back. That's where I want to place a marker, right there. And then reverse. And I'm going to add on a little bit of studio reverb here. Actually, no, do you know what? Instead of that, I'm going to go and look at my Waves plugins. And I have indeed got the uh, Abbey Road Studios reverb plates here, which could be quite nice. Isabella is here in the house tapping me on the shoulder and I've just seen uh, go and give Mike <laughs> she's good she's good uh, give Mike a tap on the shoulder uh, to make him fix those clicks uh, pop and click oh okay wow uh, let's go in and do that so I'm just going to apply this effect here uh, which is going to give me some nice reverse reverb in a tick and then I am going to go and take a look at this uh, so reverse and let's have a look. So now we've got bounce one is there. Uh, let's just remove that warning for a moment. Here we go. And pull this out. Right. There we go. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Yes, there is still a bit of clickiness, but I, I quite like the way that reverse reverb is now coming into the mix. Let's go back there and have a play with the pop and click eliminator effect. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. So I can hear a few clicky bits. Let's see whether this works or not in this instance. Uh, click pop eliminator process. Woo hoo hoo. Wow. Okay. Um... Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. I can still hear a bit of click there. Uh, Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. It's slightly better, isn't it? Um, let's see. Shall we set any more on that or shall we just leave it? Let's just leave it for the moment. Um, let's give that a go. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Yeah. Find it. Can still hear a tiny, tiny click, but it is better, definitely, running it through that process. Let's have a listen now. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. 
There we go. There's the uh, there's the first cut with Isabella. I think she sounds pretty decent, actually, as a fairy. Uh, and you can see what you can do with uh, the old harpsichord and a little Tinkerbell uh, fairy bell. Uh, <laughs> of course, uh, making something uh, rather nice and spectacular. In fact, it is getting to that time now. My goodness me, time is really flying today. 32 minutes in, and uh, it's time, I think, to do a little bit more of a fun chat with you and your live comments. <laughs> Monday to Friday, live. Yes, we are live every day, Monday to Friday from 2 p.m. UK time. I do this live stream covering audio production and more, especially for you watching right now. Let's get into those comments and find out what you've been saying during the show. There you go. So a uh, big howdy to uh, Steve Moore, who's watching at Dallas, Texas right now uh, on the Facebook live stream. We've got MD Rage from Kuwait in the Middle East. Uh, I have background noise called hiss, less than minus 30 dB. But will I be able to remove it completely if I noise gate? Uh, noise, noise gating is definitely something funky is happening with my headphones today. Oh. Um, yeah, uh, noise gating will definitely help. Um, I've got the DBX286S, uh, but I want to ask about that. Uh, yeah, so noise gating should definitely help you get rid of background noise. Um, actually, I know this is something that hasn't been touted so much yet, uh, but the latest version of Adobe Audition uh, includes a legacy compressor that was... Um, very well used uh, in Adobe Premiere Pro, and it actually has a really awesome noise gate. Um, so before, obviously, you were noise gating uh, going around the hills a little bit by going to effect and then over to amplitude and compression, dynamics processing, and setting yourself up a gate. You'll be able to gate easier when the next update for Adobe Audition drops. So uh, hopefully that will help you out a little bit. Uh, we've got Casino Duckling watching and commenting on Twitch right now. Um... What else have we got here? Um, we got Robert. A good processing tool for radio is the stereo tool. Yes, very good indeed. Um, that's still very saliva clicky, Mike. Not Isabella's fault, though. Yes, <laughs> it's the food's fault. Uh uh, I, I should definitely be cleaning that up. Uh, Scott says, I just set up a pirate FM station in Big Lake, Texas. The FCC isn't an issue. No FM stations for 80 miles in any direction. Wow. My goodness me. Is that okay? Can you set up pirate radio in, in the US? Hmm. I know if, if you did that uh, here in the UK, you'd have Ofcom knocking on your door. Uh, in fact, I don't know how harsh uh, the authorities in the UK are now on pirate radio, but I remember, uh, well, obviously the original pirates, big respect, by the way, to the original pirates uh, from the pirate ships of the, the, the 60s and 70s, uh, before the time of BBC Radio 1 and the uh, the, the light program and all of that. Um, but I know like uh, there was a resurgence of pirate radio back in the, in the late 90s and early 2000s uh, when a load of um, people would uh, start sticking uh, antennas up on tower blocks in central London <laughs> and suburbs of, of London and, and they'd start like whacking out pirate radio. In fact, I, I seem to remember uh, we live on the Isle of Wight. It's very unlikely you'll get a pirate radio station on the Isle of Wight unless a farmer decides to stick an antenna on, on, on top of his, uh, his, 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 his farmer, farmhouse or, you know, whatever. What, but, I mean, sometimes we occasionally pick up signals from Southampton and Portsmouth. Uh, but, yeah, I, I didn't know that pirate radio was still a big thing, especially as now you can just start up your own radio station online and, uh, you know, there's no need to to do stuff on the FM band, but definitely, I mean, if you're in if you're in an area which has no FM stations for 80 miles, Scott, it's a great privilege, and gosh, I bet you could whack out a big signal from your location, couldn't you? Uh, do you get any listeners? That's that's the question. How how uh, lucrative or exciting is pirate radio to, uh, to set up these days? Anyone with experience, drop a comment for me. Good morning, and howdy from Granada, locked in again. We've got Kurlond there on Facebook Live. Um, Stereo Tool is an audio processor for FM, AM, DAB, TV streaming, and home use for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Wow, Robert, that's cool. Stereo Tool, you say? I'm going to check that out because uh, I have to say it's not something I am familiar with. Stereo Tool. 
Stereo Tool. Oh yeah, Stereo Tool. StereoTool.com. Shall we um shall we bring bring it into a web browser and have a little look at this? I always like it when the when there are recommendations uh, coming in uh, about decent things to use. Let me see whether I can I can zoom in on the uh, the Stereo Tool website here. Stereo Tool broadcast audio processing, outstanding audio quality, unique feature set used by fifteen hundred plus FM stations. So it's a software based audio processor with outstanding audio quality. Interesting, software-based. Because I know a lot of the, the radio stations I used to work at, uh, they were using um, uh, an Optimod. They used Optimod uh, FM processors, and they tended to be under lock and key, either in the racks, uh, racks rooms of radio stations or uh, locked on site at the transmitter. FM transmitter features. Wow. It can generate an MPX signal, including stereo and RDS data. Oh, radio data service. My goodness me. Do we really need RDS now in the, in the internet world? This is all very interesting, and I can see they've been uh, at IBC 2017 this year, which has just, just happened. D-Clipper. Wow, Robert, you've, you've really introduced a really cool thing here. Repairs clipped audio, removes distortion. Excellent. D-Hummer. Spectrum control. Very, very cool. Looks like a new thing, especially if they've been uh, demoing at IBC 2017, which is the biggest broadcast um, conference in Europe. Wow. Oh, awesome. Thanks for dropping this in here. Uh, products. Let's have a look at the products and see. So license availability. One person on at most three systems. One PC. So I guess you have to have a PC. Okay. Uh, select your country. Outside the EU, it's 349 euros. Or, oh, where am I? I'm in the United Kingdom. There we go. Okay. We're still in the EU, just. <laughs> it's still 349 euros. I have a VAT number. Oh, I see. Yeah. So if you're a business, if you're a business, it'll actually knock off the VAT. Otherwise, uh, you need to pay VAT. So that takes it up a bit to 418.80. Um, and you can have add ons like D Clipper. Delossifier and an advanced dynamics FM standard. Wow. And they got different. Oh, they're even down to basic, which is 35 euros. Wow. So now I'm curious, uh, Robert, I don't know how well you know this product, um, but can Stereo Tool, for instance, could you use that on an internet radio station? Say you had like a, a server, uh, a Linux box or something like that, and you were, you were pumping out a playlist uh, nonstop to the internet via YouTube Live, could you run it through that software compressor and then um, and have it processed before it, it hits your listener? Because I think a lot of internet stations would be interested in this. Hmm. I have to research more on that, but yeah, StereoTool.com, that looks interesting. Thanks for dropping that in, Robert. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, GK, Magic Finger Appeared. I am a fairy with magic fingers. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to laugh at some of these comments that come in on the uh, on the live stream. Uh, I play public domain radio on Facebook, says Mark Reed. Actually, I got an email from Apple the other day telling me to check out their radio stations on uh, on Apple Music. I don't think they've got DJs on them, but uh, or, or radio hosts, I should say. Uh, but they do seem to be um, pushing their radio quite a lot recently. Apple. 50 watts at about 300 listeners, Scott says, for his pirate station. Not an issue, no ads except my own, and no one to step on. Two weeks of solid classic rock and no knocks on the door. Scott, that's amazing. Pirate radio station there. Wow, love it. I have a license for playing music, though, uh, through the club, so I am kind of in a grey area. Well, I, I guess as long as you're having fun, then just, yeah, stay stay safe with it. Uh, Ziga says, Mike, you're awesome. I really appreciate you, Ziga. Thanks for saying that. Uh, Robert says, I use it for my web radio station. That's the Stereo Tool tool, which I've not heard of before today. Uh, it does look great, doesn't it? You know, I'm always happy to mention stuff in the show if it's uh, if it looks good, or particularly if I've tried it out. I haven't tried that, so I can't recommend it. But um, hmm. non-AM or FM stations can use it free. Right, on to more fairy magic, I think. Let's do this. Uh, so what have we got here? Uh, back into the screen share. Let's have a listen. What if I fall? Oh, that's cool. I'm going to do this. What if I fall? 
Oh, but my darling, what you fly. And let's drag in some, uh... What if I fall? Oh, we need, uh, we need a little bit of, uh, music, don't we, somehow? Let's see if I can find something. There's a ding. What if I fall? Oh. Let's just, uh, bring this out a little bit. Oh. Oh, but... Oh. Oh, but my darling... What if you fly? <laughs> I don't know where that very scream came from. Uh, what if you fly? What if you fly? Uh, let's uh, double that up a little bit, like that, and then like that. And I'm going to do uh, some stereo separation there on those tracks. And we'll go to clip effects again, and I'm going to pitch, uh, pitch shifter, and we'll bring that up a little bit and then a pitch shifter over here and again I'm applying it to the clip as opposed to the whole track so it only affects a very small portion what if you fly what if I fall oh but my darling what if you fly that's quite nice uh, what else have we got here um Let's try this one. Secrets are hidden in the most unlikely places. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Secrets are hidden in the most unlikely places. Nice. Make a wish. Make a wish. What about this one? Throw me in a fairy dust and call me a unicorn. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 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 Let's try making making that one sound good. Roll me in a f roll me in roll me in a fairy dust. No, we don't really want that music. Let's find something else. What about this? Roll me, roll me in a fairy dust and call me a unicorn. Roll me in a fairy dust. Let's find something appropriate for this. We'll get there. Roll me in a fairy dust and call me a unicorn. <laughs> Roll me in a fairy dust and call me a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good laugh. I love that. Uh, let's take that. And yes, of course, uh, alt, alt drag, alt drag. Yes. Oh, yes. That's much quicker. Thank you, David, for dropping that in. I'm just going to double these up a little bit. Corn. <laughs> oh, listen to that click. <laughs> that was a click and a half. Uh, let's move this down here. Uh, and I quite like the laugh. <laughs> That's very nice indeed, isn't it? Uh, let's drop in another uh, little sound here. Uh, what else have we got? Um, we've got this. Oh, this could be good. Pixie dust. Roll me in a fairy dust and call me a unicorn. <laughs> No, we don't need that at the moment, do we? Uh, fairy flight. <laughs> that one will be quite nice. Uh, what else can we do here? Secrets are hidden in the most unlikely places. Leave a little sparkle wherever you go. Ah, that can be nice. Let's use that. Leave a little sparkle wherever you go. One of my favourite liners was the, the starting one where we had some re reverse reverb on there. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. That's actually quite a nice fairy. That's probably my favourite fairy voice of this whole session. Uh, oh yes, I know something else I was going to show you related to fairies. Uh, if we create a new audio file here, effects generate uh, speech. And then, I think you can only do this on uh, Mac OS. If you go to English United States as the language and gender neutral, uh, there is, um, where is it? Is it here or do I need to go somewhere else? There is, uh, let's have a look at English United States female. Princess, that's the one I'm looking for. I 
am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy. Let's just type that in. Click OK, and then we've got this... Um, I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy. So obviously we need to maybe pace that out a bit. But, but if you've got a Mac, uh, then generating speech in Adobe Audition. English, United States, female. The voice is princess. It says the age here is eight years old. Uh, so it's perfect as a, a little fairy. We could actually slow that down a little bit. I am a tiny... I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy. I am. Let's slow it down even more and see how I, it sounds now. I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I. And let's have a play with that in the multi track as well. So, Untitled 3, we just generated something there. By the way, we'll get back to your comments in a few minutes. Just going to do a bit more fairy magic. I am a tiny little fairy, but one day. Fairy, but. So we just need to add a little bit more of a gap between the speaking here, I, I think. I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I... I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big... I hope... Again, another gap there, because one thing text-to-speech doesn't do so well is pace out the voice very well. I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope... I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy... To be a big fairy... I hope to be it. Another cut there. Hope to be a big fairy. And there's a little click there. My goodness, even the text to speech is clicking today. What's up with that? Uh, get rid of that. Crossfade. And let's have a listen now. I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy. Nice. And she's clicking at the end as well, so let's fade out there. I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy. Nice. Okay. And what I was going to do, actually, with all of this is uh, to these clips, I was going to add a, a pitch shifter to each of them, like that, set it to default. And again, for this one, another pitch shifter here. And actually, I picked this up from a post in our community over at community.musicradiocreative.com. Juan, our, our friend in Mexico, um, post a fantastic piece in the share your projects version, uh, sorry, um, category of the community, uh, of, of something he'd created using text to speech only. And he really got that text to speech to sound very, very, I won't say it sounded human, uh, but certainly the emotion in the voice was really good. And from what I read, Juan, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were using a lot of uh, pitch shifting to kind of add the right emotion and inflection to the voice. So I'm just now going to add pitch shifter to all of these uh, clips here. Now, actually, I could have added this to the track uh, rather than each individual clip. But seeing as I'm doing it this way today, let's do that again. And... I am a tiny little fairy. So I could actually just pitch that down a bit at the end so she goes down even further. Little fairy. Oh, that's too much, isn't it? We've got to be careful with this pitching. So it kind of gave me a bit of inspiration there. Little fairy. Little fairy. Has to be very subtle, I guess. Let's zoom right in on that and see whether we can do something a little finer. Beep. Any little fairy, but one day. Hmm. Maybe that's doing a little more damage than than I need it to. Maybe we'll bring it up. Little fairy, but one. There we go. Let's bring that up and bring that out. Any little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy. Cool. I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy. So just a, a little bit of emotion in the voice here. I am a tiny I am a tiny little fairy but I am a tiny little fairy but one day and bring this in as well I am a tiny little fairy but one day I hope to be a big fairy but one day I hope to be a big fairy but one day I hope to be a big fairy but one day I hope to be a big fairy. I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy.
There we go. And uh, we will also pop in. Uh, where are my fairy? There's my fairy stuff that I created earlier. Let's see if we've got anything nice to throw into the mix. Let's use that. See if we can make something out of this. I am a tiny little. Maybe bring that up a bit. I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy. Or maybe we need something a little more sort of. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we've got here. Uh, oh wow, that's very deep, isn't it? Uh, Oh, that could do the trick, just a little tinkle like that. Let's bring that into the mix as well. I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy. Nice. Okay, what else have we got from Isabella here? Leave a little sparkle wherever you go. That definitely needs a, a, a tiny uh, fairy bell, doesn't it? Something like this. Leave a little sparkle wherever you go. Maybe put that at the end. Go. go. Nice little bell there at the end. Secrets are hidden in the most unlikely places. Fairy dust is like love. It creates magic whenever you give it away. In the midst of our lives, we must find the magic that makes our souls soar. Soar, that is, yeah. Not, not sore as in hurting, but as in soar as in flying. Um... Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. I have to say, pitching up the voice and uh, EQing it a little bit, uh, that means uh, dropping off the, um, the bass and uh, a bit of reverse reverb really tends to hit the magic spot there, I think, for fairies. Let's see what you've been saying over in the uh, the, the comments today, because, uh, of course, there are uh, lots of interesting comments, as always, that I appreciate very much, by the way. When you get involved with the show on the live chat every single day, Monday to Friday. Audio production and more. This is Mike Russell on MusicRadioCreative.com uh, So what else have we got here in the chat? Uh, we have got... Wow. Uh, <laughs> Scott's talking about his pirate radio. Amazing stuff. Um, <laughs> sounds like I swatted one. Swatted a fairy, really. My goodness me. Yes. Uh, crazy stuff. Um, Robert's saying about this uh, this stereo tool that you can get it as standalone or VST, which is quite good. So I could potentially use it in audition. I might check it out and feature it in a, in a future show when I'm talking more about radio stuff. Um, ah, yes, David Silk telling me about holding shift as well to lock in time. Yes, I, I have been using that a lot in Audition. That is a very handy shortcut to know. When you're moving uh, audio around the multi-track, if you hold down shift, it won't move around or jiggle around as you move between tracks. So a uh, very good tip there. Uh, David says, Isabella is a good fairy for Mike. <laughs> Indeed. Love the fairy voices. Um, uh, when you're good... Uh, when you're good, but when you're bad, you're better. <laughs> nice comment. Uh, Haran over on Facebook says, uh, please, can I make, can you make me a DJ liner? Haroon is on. Uh, Haroon is on. There you go. You can have that one. Uh, you can't do text to speech for a fairy. Get the expert sitting next door to do it. Yes, indeed. I should be getting Isabella in to do some fantastic fairy voices. She's done enough today already. I have to say she's done really good stuff. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Mike, how was your surgery? Give me an update. Oh, yes, I did mention at the start of the week, I was obviously away um, when I travelled to Manchester and also I was due to have some wisdom teeth out. But after a second consultation uh, with the person who was uh, due to perform the surgery, they informed me that actually I didn't really need it. Uh, so <laughs> after all of that and after all the days leading up to actually going uh, to get it done, uh, they told me in the end that I didn't really need it, have it done. And, uh, they, you know, my wisdom teeth are sitting pretty pretty right now, so kind of leave them. So I was kind of relieved to hear that, to be honest with you. Uh, that was about, uh, I was referring back to before I went away last week, I was due to go off and have two wisdom teeth removed, but it didn't happen. 
Thank goodness. Um, David Silk's talking about using spline curves. So that would actually be really good for uh, changing the pitch uh, because spline curves, rather than being sort of diagonal and kind of very straight, you kind of get a curvy um, kind of curve, which is is a good idea. Uh, Sue, Sue Cellos, 84, says Lucky. I think Sue Cellos is watching on Twitch right now. Thank you, Sue Cellos, uh, for that. I guess lucky about the wisdom teeth, absolutely. Uh, I didn't get my wisdom teeth pulled until I couldn't stand the pain anymore. Yeah, I know. I guess when it does get to that stage, I'll definitely be uh, back there again. Um, what else have we got? Uh, sorry if I'm not reading every comment. I do try to keep up as much as I can. Um... Let's have a look. Uh, Huran saying, I do need a, a paid DJ liner. If you do, definitely get in touch uh, at the website, musicradiocreative.com. Uh, <laughs> Isabella is referring to one of my early, earlier productions. It sounds like a fairy with a speech problem. Uh, Sue Cellos, 84, watching on Twitch. Yes, I'm on YouTube as well, over at youtube.com slash musicradiocreative. Be great to see you there. Um, ePrimify, the text to speech on the Virtual Windows 95 website is primo. Wow. Uh, I actually thought the text-to-speech fairy was pretty good. You're, you're being rather harsh about my text-to-speech fairy. Let's have another listen. I am a tiny little fairy, but one day I hope to be a big fairy. And we also had this one, which... What if I fall? Oh, but my darling, what if you fly? And this one... Roll me in a fairy dust and call me a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> and my favourite production so far has to be this one. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Excellent fairy. Uh, now for hire, Isabella Russell from Music Radio Creative. <laughs> Uh, Mark says, good stuff. Radio Tunisi FM. Mike, please tell us if you sell jingles. Uh, yes, absolutely. Radio Tunisi FM. Uh, just go to musicradiocreative.com. All the info you need is right there. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. See what you did there, Mark Reed. Very good. That fairy you had has a speech problem. Reminded me of Stephen Hawking. Maybe it is a Stephen Hawking uh, fairy. Who, who knows? Anyway. That's all I have time for today. Thank you for joining me again. Always appreciate you being there. And, of course, you can continue the conversation over in the community. Love to see you there. Community.musicradiocreative.com. Have a wonderful Wednesday, and I'll see you for the next show tomorrow, Thursday from 2 p.m. UK Times. <laughs>